team. You make the worst Boy Scout. <laughs> You're like, oh, I went hiking with a group. I left them all behind. I carried all their food and water away, and then they all uh, starved behind me. I don't know what happened to them. It's weird. Never saw them again. I think a bear got them. <laughs> I'm Alex Honnold. And I'm Jim Zellers. And this is how we hike. I, I actually, hiking is the fancy term for going walking in nature. If you're out for a walk in New York City and you wander into Central Park and then you like wander around the trees for a bit, you're like, oh, I went for a hike today. You know, it's like there's a whole spectrum of like, I'm just walking on the sidewalk to I turn left off the sidewalk in between some trees and then I wander up a little hill and it's like, now you're hiking. You know, it's like, I think the important thing is just to think, I'm just out for a stroll, like I'm walking. I'm walking in interesting places. And if you happen to be walking in nature, then people normally call that hiking, but you don't need to think of it as something different than what you normally do which is walk around your neighborhood. Yeah, and it's just with your explanation, a lot of people will say that when they differentiate between walk and hike, it's the walk happens, nothing happened, something happened on a hike, and it implies adventure. You got attacked by a bear? <laughs> attacked by a bear. <laughs> Charged by a moose, an alpine meadow. But it implies something more than walking, is like they discovered something. We call it poking around in the hills. <laughs> And it's just... It's Back in Appalachia, where you're from. Let's <laughs> call that poking around in the hills. How'd you know that? <laughs> I know, weird, huh? So to choose the right trail, I think you need to balance your fitness and your capabilities with your desire, you know, basically your interests. Like, do you want to see something beautiful? Do you want to get a workout? I mean, oftentimes you can just use an app and then sort of filter your search depending on those criteria. Look at the different trails, keep clicking until you find your length and a small description. You go, that looks good, and then just go, you know? I, I, I kind of agree that if, if somebody's first time hiking, I think the most important thing is the ease of the hike. You know, like something that's convenient, close to house, accessible. Like, you know, I feel like you don't need to overthink it. If you want to go for a walk, just go for a walk. Packing for a hike, you want a light bag, you want food, water, maybe a small first aid kit, a light, depending how far you're going, maybe a light jacket of some kind. I mean, it all totally depends on how far you're going and what type of conditions you're gonna be in. And I'm the same, shorts, t-shirt, and maybe some sunscreen, and probably a little lip balm. Well, because we live where it's sunny. Where's my chapstick? <laughs> exactly. I need my chapstick. Susie. Footwear is definitely important for hiking because it's easy to be like, oh, my foot felt a little uncomfortable. And then you get home and you have this giant blister, which then turns into a giant wound. And then you can't really hike for, you know, a week or so at least. I think you want shoes that are comfortable for you. You want to have broken your shoes in. I think maybe the biggest beginner mistake is to go buy a new pair of hiking boots and then be like, now I can go hike and then hike really far. Right. And then be like, oh, I destroyed my feet in these new boots. A lot of people just bring too much stuff, too much food, too many clothes. But how often do you see people day hiking? This is really common in day hiking. How often do you see two people day hiking, one has a backpack, one doesn't? And the one's carrying all the gear. Mm, I don't know, I, yeah. I kind of disagree. Really? I do that all the time. Really? Yeah. I mean, well, because I kind of feel like if you're not carrying that much for the team, it's nicer for one person to have a sweaty back and the other person to be like totally unencumbered and loving their day. Mm. You're a real Samaritan. <laughs> you're like, Bonnie, take my bag. I'm tired today. <laughs> <laughs> you think if you and I are going to go on a day hike, we're going to spend the whole time next to each other? We might, I mean, typically we might if I go stray. hiking with somebody, I stay with them and chat. That's probably really nice. But I would never go hiking with somebody and then just leave them behind like a quarter mile down the trail. Hmm. You, you make the worst Boy Scout. <laughs> You're like, oh, I went hiking with a group. I left them all behind. I carried all their food and water away, and then they all uh, starved behind me. I don't know what happened to them. It's weird. Never saw them again. I think a pair got them. <laughs> Guiding principle for all hiking or any experience in the outdoors is leaving no trace. Basically, leaving the environment in as good or better condition as you find it. We also all recognize that since there is a trail that we're hiking on, we've already made that impact. Right? So how do you keep that impact minimal, like on that trail? I think the takeaway is that if you're on a built trail, it was built for a reason and there's a lot of intention that goes into how trails are built to make sure that they can manage water. And so if you're on a built trail, you should stick to the built trail. When you get out there uh, and you see somebody on the trail, say hi, it's totally cool. The idea that you can walk past somebody on a two foot wide trail and not say hello is so strange to me. It really screams, I don't belong here. So just act like you belong there and say hello. People are pretty friendly on the trail and you never know if you might need their help later on. My perfect hike is, is seven to 10 miles, maybe a little less. Alpine lakes, nice meadows, cliffs of some kind, you know, nice big rocks. Preferably kind of crisp and cool and shady. I'd rather have the sun and go swimming along the way. If I could oh, I swim on a hike, it's the best, right? If I could swim on a hike 
have a better sun, and get to some place I haven't been and that's off of a trail and discover something new. That would just be like, I'm in. With all the hiking tips and tricks of like gear you need and stuff you need, ultimately just go walk. I mean, I think the important thing isn't to worry about doing it all correctly, it's just to go out and try it and then learn what you like to do. It's just as likely that you go out hiking and you decide that you don't really like hiking, but you prefer jogging. And so then you just start trail running instead. Or you prefer to carry more stuff and spend more time out and go backpacking. You know what I mean? It's like you never really know until you try the stuff. And I think right. the important thing, if you've never done any of it, is just to go try some of it. At like the lowest level possible, you know, just like dabble. I, I, I just think that there should be a very low bar for entry because ultimately hiking means walking. And all of us walk every day. So, you know, there's no real, like, just go walking and, and check it out. Most of our ancestors walked across the desert to get to California, so, I mean, how hard is it? And they brought pianos, so. Yeah. Well, technically, their oxen carried their piano. <laughs> Damn, basically.